In this lesson, we're going to look at how to modify the design of the floors and the glazing in the lounge. Now, at the end of the last lesson, we had created the first main line of glazing that I have now just off camera gone and mirrored to the other side. What I've also done is that I've moved this line, the diagonal one, down slightly so that we would have enough space for this mirror to happen. We don't also need such a wide terrace in this area. So what it allowed me to do is that I now have a fixed panel, or at least three fixed panels in this area behind the these two columns and I now have these areas behind the columns where all of the doors can stack. In other words, none of these three doors are going to move. There will always be sufficient transparency through here and the doors will all have ample space to basically slide away and be out of sight, especially when we're looking out through this main opening and when we're in the lounge looking out in this direction and as well in this direction. But now one of the things that we're going to solve in this lesson are how do we complete the rest of the glazing and as well how do we handle some of the floor and height differences that we have between the two spaces. Now I added these three steps so that we could have a little bit more of a design issue to play with and to solve together since this is a typical way that you will have to start thinking about how to manage different levels. Now having a sunken lounge is really preferable because it within a very large space does differentiate the uses that there are within those spaces. So it's a very nice design element to have. Over here we spoke about that we have this planter happening where we bring a little bit of outside planting inside so we create a little bit of a soft and in a natural environment. And then over here we have a double garage that is going to house one single luxury car. And because this is the dining area, I've decided that it would be a very nice design feature to have this entire area glazed off. So one of the things that we need to start looking at are first of all these height differences. Now if this dining area which is on the higher level is going to open up to this terrace and this lower lounge area is going to open up to this terrace we need to have a difference in height here as well. The best place to put that height difference is going to be in this area here. So I'm going to start by drawing in those steps. What I can do is I can simply go and copy these three steps and I can go and paste them here. Then I can take these lines here and I can just trim them so TR enter select this line as your trimming line right click and then just trim off those excess lines. Now what you need to start thinking about is how am I going to stack these doors if I actually have different levels happening all over the place. So what we're going to do to solve that is that I'm going to first of all start by aligning and just refining some of the lengths of these walls. The column over here, if it has a beam above it, is going to end up somewhere around here. So I want to stretch this line so that, or stretch this wall so that it meets that line. At least it'll be able to support that beam which is happening on top here. We may look later at adding another column into these areas since the span, as I mentioned in the last lesson, is very excessive. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a cut out that is going to be happening at this lower level for these doors to be able to slide in. So I'm going to start by moving these steps till about here. I can actually move them by a fixed amount, 300 millimeters, and I'm going to stretch them across slightly. Then I know that I want these steps to finish at one point and at least I want the floor, the higher level of the floor, to do something like this. So I'm going to have the higher level of the floor, if you can imagine the area that is on the dining, will basically wrap around this column, it will envelop it, and I want to have an, a distance that is equivalent to this side. So I'm going to mirror this line, so MI enter, mirror it according to this construction line, and then I'm going to draw in another line here. Then I'm just going to make these two meet, match properties with this red line, and that's going to be the upper level. Now I need to decide where these stairs are going to be. Either they can finish here or they can finish much higher. I'm going to just move them down again. I know they were more or less in that position, so I'm going to move them there. And I'm going to just slide this line manually by grabbing the end. So now what I've done is I've just started to refine how this all works. So here I'm assuming that the sliding rail is actually going to be much lower and this glazing line is actually going to go straight down to the lower level. In other words, the terrace will have a bit of a notch cut into it so that this glazing line can slide in and basically stack and stack away in that area. That also means that this area up here will all be on the upper level 
So this glazing line will be higher and this one will be slightly lower. It's a little bit difficult to think about all of that and plan, but once we start drawing elevations, and especially in the next course when we do the 3D part, all of that will be much more resolved. So next I'm going to figure out how we can do this planter and how we can start adding the glazing that is going to be this car gallery, uh, luxury car gallery that we have going on this side. So first thing, I think that we can go and move this line in a little bit. So I'm going to move that to there. And here I'm just grabbing the ends of each line individually and just moving them as, as we go along, as we design. I can also extend the lines out to meet that line. And I basically start to create somewhat of a, an idea that there is something happening. So next what I want to do is I'm going to create an edge to this planter and I'm going to offset a distance of 300 millimeters to there. I'm going to now trim this and I'm going to move this line down to there. And I also want to create an, an edge to this planter here. So if you imagine that this is the upper level, I need to create a little bit of a wall here that is going to retain the soil that is happening in that area. So I'm going to use that line of the wall and I'm just going to manually move that in and then match properties as I'm busy working in a different layer. You can actually work on slabs. So I can also look at whether this is the right proportion because this is slightly thicker than that. It doesn't really wrap around too neatly. We can also look at the distance if you want to make that those distances equal. We have 450, so you can offset 450 from this side and you can go and stretch these lines to the right. And this way you can start really modifying and tweaking very slowly but surely how your design is looking. The next thing you should always remember to do when you add stairs is to have a symbol for which direction your stairs go in. So this we will simply do by adding a arrow that is showing the direction from the bottom to the top. So this you can add as such and then you just want to have a slightly bigger triangle. You can either use an arrow uh, that is filled in or just add one which basically looks something like this. So basically any type of arrow that people will understand so that they can see the direction that your stairs are busy moving in. This can be on a text layer or any type of other uh, layer that denotes your annotations and this would also be on a text layer as well so that we can match properties with this line here. So in the last couple of uh, seconds or at least the last two three minutes of this lesson what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this glazing line so that we can fill in this last portion over here. Now I can start by finding out if there is a mirror line that I can mirror it because what I'd otherwise have to do is I'd have to copy it and then rotate it. So if I can find out what that exact line is, then perhaps it'll be much easier for me to mirror this design. Now, if I take the point from here to here, I can also measure the angle between these two lines and then just find that equivalent mirror line. If you don't know what that angle is, I do know what it is in my head because I know that this angle is 30, but if you don't know you can always draw a circle like so. You can just use plain simple geometry and do that. That will be a very simple ge geometric exercise and then you can mirror all of this so you can just grab that whole lot without really selecting those parts. Use this as a mirror line and there you will have the rest of your glazing line. Now at this point you can decide whether this entire line should be retractable or whether you should add another column and retract it from later. So all of these are little design, design decisions that can take a lot of time, a lot of trial and error. You can go backwards and forwards before you actually manage to come up with a good glazing system. So I'm not going to do all of that hit and miss on screen. I'm just showing you the basic workflow and I'm going to do some of my own tweaking off screen and then come in the next lesson with the results once I've gone and stretched and copied and mirrored the rest of this. Since it is going to take a good number of minutes to actually work through and get the entire uh, glazing system flowing nicely. But just before I go, I'm going to also show you how we can very quickly do the garage doors. Now I'm going to start by copying as much as I can from existing other designs. So I'm going to just take the uh, couple of elements from this door here and I'm going to quickly create a layer that is, 
I'm going to use this icon here to make the this object the current layer, so Windows. And I'm going to create a rectangle, just swipe it over or at least trace it over those two lines. I'm going to move this so it is in place. And I'm going to move this entire assembly to be to line up with that. Then I'm going to copy this frame down to the bottom column and stretch this line that I created, which is the thickness of the garage door, to this one. Then I'm going to mirror the three objects over using that center line as the mirror line. Then I'm going to stretch this downwards. And you can see that I'm never really recreating anything. I'm always trying to copy, mirror, stretch as much as I can. And this is something I mentioned in a much earlier lesson. And that really helps you with your speed. So these two are exactly the same size. So using that as a mirror line will give you basically that result. So there we have it. That was about 10 seconds to do all your garage doors. You don't really have to spend any more time than that doing things like that. So the other thing to copy and to redo will be the glaze on this side and I'm all all I'm going to do is I'm going to take the window style that we have here in these service zones of the kitchen and those are going to be quite similar to what is going to happen here it is a glazing system that will allow one leaf to slide across and open to one side and it'll have a fine uh, mesh or a fine uh, grid or let's say a screen just giving you some privacy in those bathrooms and then I'm going to copy the glazing system from the lounge and I'm going to just paste it over here since the door leaves are going to be more or less the same size so here you can see the same process happens again and again and again you just copy paste mirror stretch and you can pretty much create and finish the entire level just doing those three functions so this lesson was mainly just about handling some of these design issues, copying and uh, multiplying your glazing facades. And as I mentioned, I'm going to complete the rest of the lounge off screen. And then the next lesson, we're going to then have a look at uh, what step we do next.